Looking at the body cam and interrogation footage of Sarah Boone, in February of 2020 while drinking and playing hide and seek with her boyfriend, George Torres Jr., when Torres got into a suitcase, she zipped it up, she went upstairs and fell asleep. The next morning when she awoke, she says when she unzipped the suitcase, Torres was unresponsive and not breathing. She called 911 and started CPR. Look at her reactions here. We were playing and who zipped him up in I did, okay. but then I fell asleep. Okay, okay, stop. Okay, I don't, I wasn't here. I'm just trying to figure out what happened. I fell asleep, so I don't know if you suffocated her. Like, had an aneurysm or a heart attack or what? What kind of medical condition did you have? None that I know of. Nothing that you know of. None that I know of. No. 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 All we had was a bottle of wine. Literally, just a bottle of wine. Okay. Doing puzzles. Detectives show up and immediately start questioning her. She tells the same story multiple times like she's been rehearsing it all morning. We were putting puzzles together and we were doing artwork and then decided to play hide and seek, just being stupid. Okay. So he decided to get in the suitcase. So I thought it would be funny to, and he was laughing about it too, dip him up in there. I go upstairs and fell asleep. This was not intentional. This is the phrase we come to hear on repeat during the interrogation. Let's take a look at some of this interrogation footage. Scratch marks to his back. I know what that's from. It's called a contusion. Do you know what a contusion is? Like, basically, you're getting hit, and then, you know, you you, you get a mark from it. You'll get bruising. Like, some, okay. someone hit you or something like mm -hmm. that. It's called a, a contusion. So he had some injuries to his left shoulder. He had a cut near his, like, lip. His mouth was a little uh, I haven't laid a hand on him. Also, too, I, he fell off my son's bike. Okay. So I don't know. And he's notorious for running into the wall. They occurred recently. It wasn't something that occurred post to when he was... In all case. honesty, all honesty, we have not gotten into it. We had a good time mm -hmm. sitting on the back porch, having wine, and smoking a couple of cigarettes, and then decided to go inside and literally paint, do puzzles, and play. We had a good day. This is one of her go-to lines. It was a good day, we had a good day. She tries to disconnect herself from what she has done. Distancing herself from this by saying, I don't know where this is coming from. It's been good. I don't know, you said you guys have been good. What's your definition? I've been good. good. I don't yeah. think you all understand. He comes at me all the time. Right, but you're saying that you guys have been good, and when I mm -hmm. asked you yesterday, there hasn't, the last incident that you could remember was the curtain rod incident, which you said was a month ago, so. Give or take. Right. So what do you mean by he comes after you? Like, he gets belligerently drunk. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you all have looked through my phone yet and seen any of the pictures and the videos that I have taken. She actually asks, I don't know if you have looked through my phone yet. At one point, I started documenting everything. Okay. So it's... And why are you still with him? Everybody asks me that. When I tell you guys this, I really love him. Like I do, and I feel like I can help him. Like I feel like I could help him, which I did because he's come a really, he came a really long way. I, I did everything for him. Everything. She just goes on and on and on about how she is the best thing that has ever happened to George. Incredibly narcissistic during this entire interview. The entire time these detectives are holding a wild card they're going to drop on Sarah. Um, you had mentioned that you take, uh, you would take photos, videos, just kind of like a proof and just in general. Yeah, I started documenting at one point. I don't know if you would like to see on my phone or I think it's, I think it's actually on a laptop. Um, D, his ex-wife, when I say a monster, she's a monster. Like it does, she withholds her, their children from speaking to him. Sarah Boone is calling someone a monster. Look at the demeanor of these detectives now. And the suitcase was there originally because you guys were planning to do donations, and so it was already okay. there. Um, have you guys ever played the, you said you played hide and seek like probably three times in your relationship. Mm -hmm. When you have played, have you ever zipped him up in a suitcase prior? No. Okay. So That's it was just kind of like that prop was there and it was there yes. and it was in play because. Why do you say it like that though? I would <laughs> never do that. You would never zip him up in a suitcase? It, well, I mean, I mean, we were playing. No, I know, that but, time, I'm just, but I'm saying, I'm, well, I'm talking about hide and seek, which is a game, so. This is where things take a turn. I do not recommend going and watching this footage. It is on YouTube, but it is haunting. It really messed with me. They show Sarah the footage as she had recorded the night prior. Sarah is taunting and laughing as George is seen squirming and pleading for his life. Fuck you. Oh. Fuck just, you. That's you, no. your voice. Guys, this is killing me right now. 
This is killing me right now, she said. How do you think George felt in that suitcase? So this image is upside down, and then this small video that occurred 11 minutes later, it's flipped over the other way. So he didn't, how did that, how did it go from the back to the front? I flipped it. Okay. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. Well, that's what you did. Yeah. But not intentional of. So pushing up on a suitcase saying, Sarah, 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 I can't I breathe. Can't breathe. George has done that in the past before, too, where it's just like he thinks that he's woe is me kind of thing. She has the audacity to say he has done this in the past and woe is me. Where it's like, I don't he's never been locked in a suitcase, but no. now he couldn't get out. So my plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. My plan was not to he'll be up here any minute. But, but you again. willingly went upstairs and went to sleep. No one forced you to go upstairs and get my plan wasn't bed. also to leave him in the suitcase. So why didn't you take him out? Because I went upstairs, and then I fell asleep. But why didn't you consciously think, he's asking to come out, he can't I didn't breathe. do it intentionally. What do you think is going to happen if you leave somebody in a confined space like that? <coughs> well, I thought by not sitting it up all the way, it would be okay. My plan was not to leave him in the and suitcase. what was your plan? When you didn't, that didn't cross your mind, because that's it like didn't an, That's like an assumption. Like, that's what you all are thinking, just... We're asking. It's the whole... You tell us. This is not an assumption when this is actually what happened. I like how they both just sit here and let her stew in the mess she has created for herself. The lack of remorse in acting as if this is just a big mistake is truly gross. See, Asad then comes in and gets forensic evidence from under Sarah's fingernails. They tell her she is not free to go and she starts to question everything as the male detective explains once again why this is happening. George is dead, intentionally or not. Okay, Sarah, so you're not free to go. Okay. Okay. All right, do me a favor, stand up. <coughs> I need you to turn around, face the wall, put your hands behind your back. Do you have anything in your pockets that I should know about? No. Okay. Why is this happening? George is dead. 